good. If I don't have any fire and I don't have any fuel, then I don't see her running at all. Dang it. Where do I go from here? Start a YouTube channel, they said. It'll be fun. Work on cars. So much fun. So guys, this video is gonna be a little bit different than what you're used to seeing, since me and dad are not actually in front of the camera. Now, when we ventured out to Tennessee to buy the old Elvis Cadillac, we brought along our good friend, Sean, who was working on this old abandoned S10 that we bought from the property as well. Now, be sure that you watch along as he takes this old forgotten truck that's been sitting in a junkyard for over 25 years, revives it, and even attempts to drive it over 800 miles back home. So I got the bright idea, ride a motorcycle up there, put it in the bed of the truck, bring it on home. We're, we're, we're done with this <laughs> for a while. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm ready to go home. <laughs> we're gonna get busy on these brakes and uh, see if we can't make it out of here sometime today. Heard a little noise whenever I cranked it up. Just headed to the gas station and something slung off of it. Noise went away. I think we just swung the bell. Yeah. Water to rip. Oh, nice. I know. She's not old and crusty. But these make some really good little drag trucks. They're just a, a tasteful little truck. This is a later model. I'm going to say 91, 92, something like that. I think that's the ones that had that style grill in it. The tire there may need a little bit of air. Solid custom bumper. Power windows. Ugh. That's gonna be nice and sticky. Well, dang. I bet you the battery's gonna be dead. Somebody left the key on. Hey, glove box works. That's nice. Not full of a rat's nest. It's even better. Mmm. Mm. Heavy duty right there. Oh my. At first glance, would you look at that exhaust? It's a little lacking. Hmm. This thing's gonna make some noise if it runs. What is the, what is going on here? Now somebody's got that wired up and it doesn't even fit in there. Look, I can stick my finger up in there. Well, we know it's not gonna run very good with the O2 sensor right there and no pipe on it, if it runs at all. Okay. Looks like the AC's been deleted. It's got a throttle body on it that does not look real promising. Let's see, we got missing vacuum line. That one's capped. Hmm. Well, just dig into it, I guess. I'm not seeing nothing in there. That's fine. Let's see what we got on the, got for oil. Yeah, she's got a little bit of oil in there. I know, I need to get her to run first, but Oh, that's not good. Okay. It's got oil in it. We know that. I wonder if I can get this thing to rotate. You know, that thing like rolls over really, really easy. <laughs> I don't think that's a good sign. This thing rolls over super easy. Like super, super easy. barely pulling on that thing. So I guess I need to get a battery chunk in here. See if we can get the starter to work. See if we can get fuel, fire, all that good stuff. Okay, got us a battery. <clears throat> Hope it fits because I just robbed it out of the back of Lance's truck. Like it fits perfect. Alrighty. See if we get any power. Hey, we got a door buzzer. Yeah, 
Clutch works. Could swore I just heard the fuel pump. That fuel pump is working. Let's try it one more again. We're spinning over. That's a good sign. So jack some gas out of Lance's truck as well. Start pouring it in here. This tank smells like varnish. It's probably a bad idea that I'm putting this in here, but what else are you gonna do? Gonna have to see if it'll hold some gas anyway. We know the fuel pump's working. Well, we know the fuel pump's making noise. I don't know if it's working. Hey, it quietened down. Quiet way down. That's a good sign. All right, we'll spin her over now and see if we got any squirty squirt. See if I can set y'all up here so y'all can watch it. Okay. All I'm checking for now is to see if we got fuel. And that thing looks dry. So on a throttle body setup, does it have to have ignition for the injector to work? I don't know, I wouldn't think so, but I don't know. Loose. Let's see if we squirty squirt. All right, well, we're getting some varnish up right now. Okay, come on, injector, work for me here. Still dry. Okay, so looks like I need to get my throttle body rebuild kit out. Then we'll move on to fire. Maybe I'm doing that backwards. Probably so, but that's how I'm gonna do it. Two bolts. That it? That ain't right. It's these. Idiot. See, I told you, never worked on these. Well, that's nice. There's no gasket. Well, I'll take that back. They got a metal gasket? All right, so what we're gonna do, so we can have a uh, decently tall workbench, we're just gonna rebuild it on the hood. Hey, it's got windshield wipers. Cause you know when we try to take this thing home, drive this thing home, it's gonna rain. That's why those boxes were in there. Throttle body rebuilding table. What do we do with throttle body? I've never rebuilt one of these, so I have no idea what I'm doing. Mm. I like that, that injector doesn't want to come out. So I'm gonna get this thing all apart, then I'm gonna have to go back and watch this video so I can see how to get it back together. So all 
all that is clear in there. Man, I want to get this injector out though. Mm. I don't think it's coming. All righty. All that cleaned up. These gaskets here weren't leaking, so I think I'm just going to leave those alone. Like I say, there's no gasket or anything. That's all open. Put a new O-ring there. Hmm. See if we can get some fuel pressure to her and see what she'll say. Keep on rolling, baby. Old school, little limp biscuit. Uh, oh. If we want the injector to fire, probably need to hook it up. You know, it's very possible it couldn't even be the injector issue. It could be the wiring issue. All right, let's try it again. We are looking for squirty squirt. Cycle that key again. All right, now we got pressure now. What we say? Nothing. Okay, no fire. So now we need a jack and a lug wrench and Harbor Freight jack stand. So we can mess with this distributor, distribution power thing. Get this, this thing needs to go. You got to go. I'm not dealing with you anymore. You're in the way. <sighs> got it. Hey, look at there. Brakes got about half pad. Almost to the squealers there. Get down. Sit down. You think those jack stands are rated to hold this truck? I mean, that's a dually wheel, so we should be good. If I don't have any fire and I don't have any fuel, then I don't see her running at all. That thing is rusted. Not real sure how much that plays into it, but I would, I would be willing to bet that those play a part in firing. And they look pretty rusty. So let's clean that up a little bit. Okay. Will it crank? Hope so. Firing the hole. Nope. Ah, you know. I don't think any of this injection is working. Yeah, she spins over, but uh, not getting any injector pulse. We ordered a computer, but this computer isn't like that computer. You're kidding. Nope. Yeah, no injector pulse leads me to believe that there's something through the 
fuel injection. So I was gonna throw a computer in it, yeah. but that's not gonna work. About a few months ago, I pulled it out. It was way down in there. And I pulled it out because I didn't want trees falling. Right. And I had it out here, so when this all came out, I pulled it out here. Yeah. It looks like it's popped. That's the same. Fuel injected. Yeah. Oh, that's got a different. That's a different throttle body. If the computer's in the same spot, it's gone out of this one. If it's in the same spot. That other truck, the computer hung down right there. Oh, no, there it is. Is it? Yeah, it's there. I just don't know how to. I didn't even bring my phone either to run that VIN number. You see it? Yes, sir. It's going to be the eighth VIN. So one, two, three, four, six, seven, H. Eighty-seven. It might. Well, we take that anyway. Going over yeah, here. I'll have to. Uh, I'll have to oh, get. I'll have to come back cool. with a socket. But you said I you might. Here, what road I put on today? Eighty-seven needs motor. <laughs> Well, you wrote it right there. <laughs> Gotta be like my dad. Look in a broader area. <laughs> right. Uh, I'll have to. Yeah, I'll have to grab a socket. But I'll. Uh, yeah, I'll come back and pull it out and see. You. Well, I just took that out of the front seat. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I'll put it back in there once we get the. Once I pull it out, at least. Oh, you need tools. Man. Yeah, uh, you said there might be one more. Okay. So I know you got a blazer right there, but I think those are usually V6s. Yeah, these are usually six owners. Well. Yeah, it's six on there. Yep. Yeah. That's uh, that's that's probably gonna be a V6. Like I say, I don't think they had any of the blazers that had a four cylinder in them. I could be wrong. Let me see. Let's see. Six on it. Yep. Yeah, then when you got up into the newer ones, they were the 4.3. All right, I'm gonna grab a socket and I'll walk back up there and see, uh, at least pull it down and see what it looks like. And hopefully it looks the same. Going by the looks of it, the plug, where the, uh, Prom, probe, P-O-R, I don't know. Wherever that thing goes in, it looks the same. 
This is an 87 S10. Hopefully it's the same. And if it's, that's even our problem. Oh, wait, I told this guy I'd put all this stuff back. Put this stuff back, dummy. I'm gonna be trashing up his stuff. I want that seat. That's a good looking seat. This guy has a lot of cool stuff. He's got a lot of junk too, but does have a lot of cool stuff. Oh, oh, I don't know how I didn't see this. Look, oh, it's crunched. Dang it. Wait, what is that? Just a fender and a door? Just a little on the corner. Oh man, it's rusted. Dang. Y'all know this is my thing. It's a cougar. I've seen one of these before. That tailgate is gone. I know what motor's in it. It's a early to mid 70s. Survey says probably got a 400. Ooh, got a battery. Wonder if it'll crank. I'll be back. Okay, let's see. Uh, I don't know if our numbers are gonna be the same or what, but, but. All right, injectors back on. Battery, we need a battery. What say you? You say nothing. You got any fuel? I don't understand why you're not spraying fuel. I need you to spray some fuel. So clearly the EFI is not working. We're not pulsing the injector. Okay, I go back to the Googler. All right, apparently via the internet, they're saying that there's a Halifax switch in the distributor. I'm kind of thinking is that thing that I probably tried to clean and that had the rust on it. Maybe that's it. I'm not sure. But also people were talking about the control module, ignition control module being an issue. So I'm going to go ahead and swap that control module out and see what that does. I'm still not getting any kind of fuel. And even if I spray it with starting fluid, will not crank. So it means we're not getting any fire. So maybe our control mod, igni ignition control module is our issue for injector pulse and fire. So let's swap that out and see. Alrighty, new ignition module. Let's see what that do. All right, that doesn't make any sense. I guess now I need to swap back the computers. Because maybe this computer won't run it. Well, I mean, the fuel pump works. But does the, yeah, fuel pump would have to work off the computer because it cycles. Hey. Let's 
in the ignition switch. As soon as you let off, it tries to hit. Fire in the hole. Well, that's weird. Brand fuel. But when you let off of the key is when it tries to hit. Yeah, this thing will hit when you let off the key, try to crank it with a screwdriver, jump it over the starter, it does the same thing. So what does that mean? And it looks like, so the top of my injector is wet. Maybe I didn't mess with them O-rings enough to where that thing is leaking on them O-rings. So I might actually have to try to get that out of there. Let's see. Where do I go from here? Maybe check the ignition switch under the dash. Where's that dude at? Oh, right there, ain't it? Somewhere, some horse. I'm thinking we pull this panel off so we can see. Let's do that. Well, that thing has the symphony sound system. Oh, we're going to be jamming out if we ever get this thing running and driving. What are you doing? Come over, come over here to rub it in my face. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm starving. I told uh, Liam, I said, I'm not used to just not eating like we do. No. <sighs> Seems how Lance got his cranked, you know, I snuck over there and stole that dude and his wire wheel. So I don't know that... Actually having the coil grounded is right, but we're gonna do it anyway. I don't know if it's gonna make a difference or not. Probably not, knowing my luck. What do you got going now, bud? Well, we got it to hit when you let off the key. Yeah, you just tell me about that. That's so, it's loose, it's breaking fire, ain't it? Yeah, so I'm going to ground this coil. Don't know if it's a culprit or not, but I'll go ahead and mm -hmm. ground it. I kind of feel like a coil is some of the issue because I can wiggle the wire and it would power the uh, mm -hmm. truck on or off. So there's supposed to be some kind of a Halifax sensor in that distributor. Kind of thinking that that might be an issue as well. Yeah. <laughs> sure, 
Yep. Yeah. By the looks of things, given what I'm finding out on the internet, my intermittent spark is caused by the Halifax sensor in the distributor. Don't have one of those. We do have that other parts truck I robbed the computer out of. Unfortunately, it's an 87. It has a different style. Uh, TBI on it so the distributor is completely different as well so I can't rob the one out of that truck I think I'm kind of dead in the water at the moment because hmm. I don't know that there's anything that I can do with this sensor to get it to work. Guess I need to Google on how to check it. If you can check it. So it looks like our good buddy Sean forgot to plug in his mics here. So I'm just gonna narrate this for you, looking at our old rusty distributor here. And I don't know if that's is that broke there or what exactly he's doing. I figure maybe if I touch it right here and tap it and just you know put it back in, maybe it'll work for him. Afternoon, morning, whatever it is, I don't know. We kind of got a late start this morning. Got some good news. Yesterday we were pretty much dead in the water and I didn't realize that on this distributor after I pulled it out There's actually parts missing This is broke and there's another little tower if y'all can see that Another little tower right there Just like these That are broke as well I didn't know that. Like I say, I haven't messed with, I don't even know if I've messed with one of these little S10s like this. This is that Hall Effect sensor here, but if you're not getting current ohms, I don't know what you call it, through all of this, I can see why this thing wasn't working. Luckily last night we were able to find a distributor. It was at an O'Reilly's. That one looks a lot better. It's got all four of our little fingers there. Not rusted. We actually have a fan of the channel, friend, been a Facebook friend for many years. He was uh, close to this O'Reilly's, so we, he was actually kind enough to say, hey, I can pick it up, run it down there for you. So, showed up today, got a brand new distributor. Let's see if we can get this thing to bust off. Alrighty, got the new distributor all in there. Went ahead and put the new cap on it. Got our battery hooked back up. Let's see if we can't make a bunch of noise. Come on now. Be good to you. Awesome. See, I told y'all that was the problem all along. Y'all didn't know. 
Okay. I don't have any coolant or water or anything like that. <sighs> so now what? I figure while uh, we'll figure out what to do about coolant, we'll fire it back up and we'll check this clutch. See if we get any kind of movement there. not we don't have clutch disengagement well we're gonna have a clutch master or slave cylinder issue uh. See if we can get a pedal out of it. So it feels like that's all the clutch pedal we got right there and I bet you it's not enough. Nope. Okay. Might as well hit the brake pedal. Well, that's rock hard. I mean, it kind of feels like it's got something. Oh. I do know. I did pull the cap off of this yesterday. We have no sock in there. Does that little sock make a difference? I think we need to walk up to the hill, check out the other S10, see if it's got one. Well, that one don't have a sock in it either. He's not come with one? I would think that thing's got a little weep hole right there. I would think it would have had a sock in it, but I guess not. I can actually grab that manifold and it has exhaust running back. I don't know, y'all can't see it down there, but I can. I can see, it's there, okay. He said I can have anything off of this truck that I needed to make the other one work. Thinking we need to do that. At least get something on it. What does this look like? I if this looks any better. Yeah, about the same. Okay. I don't know what else we'll gain off of this truck other than that exhaust manifold, maybe. Is the other manifold? Yeah, there's no flange or nothing on it. I guess I could weld a pipe directly to it and then build something off of that. The landowner did say that he had a pipe bender. Now, I've never done any exhaust work before, so. I don't know if I want to go, you know, full custom route. I might have to get some pointers on that. I got some water. We're going to go ahead and fill some water up in this thing. Fill this thing up with water. Put water in. I don't know, however you want to say it. We'll fill it up with water, get it cranked up, let it sit there and run. See if we can build some heat in this dude. See if there's any leaks. We'll also go ahead and throw some brake fluid in it. See where that's leaking out at. Leaking yet? We got 
got no leaks. Engine sounds really, really good. It had a little stumble there for a second. I still smell a little bit of the bad gas. Sounds great. None of the gauges in here are working, unfortunately. Well, I say that. Temperature gauge is coming up. That's a good sign. That would be really nice if that gauge will work. 276,073 miles. She's been around the block. A timer seven. Sounds good. We did notice on that right front wheel, you know, that brake hose was looking pretty terrible. And the brake pedal, I guess it will pump up a little bit. Oh, it's starting to pump up. There we go. So I think at least the oil pressure and the water temperature gauge work. I don't think the amp gauge works. So been running for a few minutes now. I mean, it's just sitting right there on 210. I can feel Upper radiator hose is hot, so it's flowing through. Good deal. Just holding steady right there. Oh, just jumped up just a bit. We're gonna let it run a few more minutes. Make sure that that temperature doesn't do anything crazy, and then we're gonna shut it down and go ahead and do an oil change on it. Then we'll get back to the brakes. Yeah, that temperature ain't moving. It jumped up there for a second and then it came right back down. I think she's gonna be good. Dang, no horn. So we're heading back up the hill. Oh, little prairie dog. We're heading back up the hill to the S10. The uh, property owner here said he was going to help me. He's going to get his tractor out and come up here and pick this dude up so I don't have to try to jack it up or anything like that. So that was pretty nice of him. I'm going to take a little road trip. The manifold's unbolted, so that's a good sign. Looks like the converter is gone. So it is, it does have the spring-loaded exhaust flange bolts. And by the looks of things, does it have the bolts or the nuts? It has bolts. So maybe we can spray something on those to get them out. See if we can see up under here. Hey, there's a converter right there. I got a muffler. You know, I think probably your saws all and cut that thing right there. Or there. There or there. Or there. Maybe there. Hey, there's a muffler there. Muffler. What's it look like in there? I can't see. Any, any tailpipe? 
turn down? I don't know. We don't need all that anyway. But if we can get it to quiet down back to there, that'd be great. What are these gonna be, a 15 millimeter maybe? Wonder if I can get this thing high enough off the ground. We can just pull that whole system out without cutting it. Now that would be ideal because I feel like the truck now is high enough off the ground. Yeah, let's walk up here and get some tools. Do a little hoping and praying that I can get these to break loose without breaking them off. to go from underneath of it with an extension. All right, I'm gonna have to wait on him to get up here. Yeah, dude. Keep that damn away. <laughs> I guess you do know what's back here, huh? You just know how to take it apart and everything. <laughs> oh, look at that high performance, too. I'm wanting to say it looks like there might have been a fire or something close to this thing. Well, you got all this loom is melted. Say it'd be yeah, it's it, it's but it's everywhere. Uh, I was mm -hmm. seeing something over there that looked like it was melted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there. It's, right. it's weird. Yeah, that's some good stuff right there. <laughs> it was super there for you. Yeah. Uh, duh. Oh, good. <laughs> All righty. Custom Borla header installed. Sweet. Now we'll slide some exhaust under it and then crank it back up and see what she sound like. Not real sure why I need to crank it back up, but yeah. You just keep cranking your stuff whenever it sounds good. Uh, oh, yeah, it's gonna have to. May not have it high enough off the ground. Uh, there we go. Uh, almost. There we go. Oh. Uh, I should have brought my ratchet. Yeah, this uh, that bracket there is cut off. Looks like they had some kind of strapping material around there. Yeah. Let me see if we can tie that back up. Mm -hmm. ah. There we go. Mm. I guess uh, for the time being, just let it hang, you know, uh, figure out what we can do about getting it tied up. All right, Steve out here was able to rustle me up some custom exhaust hangers so we'll ease up underneath there and get this exhaust tied up. Uh, 
Give me a little, uh, little cowbell there. Needs more cowbell. Let's see. See nothing wrong with that. That's fine. <sighs> Let's crank it up. See what she sound like. Well, that wasn't cool. That part good. Yeah, the throttle hung open. Oh, did it? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, what the heck? I ain't holding up. <laughs> that wasn't cool at all. <laughs> Get ready to go. No. <clears throat> yeah. hmm. I guess I'm going to ease on for a while. Okay, dope. Right? I appreciate your help. Yeah. What are the odds that I'll be able to get a bleeder broke loose? I kind of feel like that's not going to be any good. I don't think that's going to be any good. But it would be nice, you know, to have some brakes. Wheel bearing's a little loose. I don't remember checking that. That's crusty. You gonna turn and break off? Oh, it turned. L I B. Probably be a while before we get any kind of fluid out of these because. That front reservoir was completely dry. Got a little bit of slack in the idler arm, not bad. You know, I sure need to uh, invest in some way to bleed brakes by myself, like a brake leak bleeder. Hmm. So I'll go back in there and pump this thing up first and we'll bust this dude back loose. So I feel like I'm at a point right now where I need some wheels and tires. That, and which is this the rear or the front reservoir here? This one was dry, you saw that. I'm leaning towards that being the rear, this being the front. Either way, got it full of fluid. I've actually got a pretty decent brake pedal. But I'm at a point now where I think I need wheels and tires to see if this thing will move and actually stop. We have some wheels and tires located for it. Hopefully gonna try to go grab those this evening. But I think for now, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and do a full tune up on this thing. We've got plugs and wires and all that. Our new distributor came with a new distributor cap and rotor, so we don't have to worry about that. I get those plugs and wires put on it. Um, get these injector lines, get those fixed, tied up out of the way. Just kind of tidy this thing up a little bit. Hopefully have some wheels and tires for it tomorrow. And then we can go on our first test drive. So I'm gonna tune this thing up and then Pretty sure y'all don't want to watch that because I mean 
you know, putting plugs and wires on. Everybody knows how to do that. So I'm going to get busy doing that. And we'll see y'all later, tomorrow, the next day. Do we end it off here? I don't know. We'll see. Do y'all run into this kind of stuff? R43 TS6. R43 TS6. R43 TS6. R43 TS6. R43 TS6. AC Delco 125 68 387. And this plug is just like this one. Really? Come on, AC Delco, get it together. I'm not blaming anybody except for where these plugs came from and where they were boxed. That's just ridiculous. So I get to put two plugs in. It's probably good too because that was the first one. There's the second one. That one don't look too terrible. No telling how long these things been in here. So, yeah, I mean, at least we get two. Morning, guys. We are back at it out here. Went to a tire store this morning. Got a couple of tires for Lance and his project. Picked up a new tire for ours. Now we just got to get it put on this wheel. I got me some tire tools here. The only issue is bead is not broke on the back. Maybe it's not completely stuck. We're going to get to changing this tire out real quick and see if we can actually drive this rig. All right, let's see if she'll talk to us this morning. Fire in the hole. Like nothing. There she is in her little resting spot for, I don't know, week, month, two months, year. Nah, better not be. Guys, that's been months ago. Whenever we originally did that video, that was the same time that Lance was doing the video on the Elvis Cadillac. I had something else to do, which was do the S10. Well, we couldn't bring it home because we had to bring the Cadillac home. So that thing has been sitting at flat broke garages place for months and it's time to bring it home so i got the bright idea i'll just get my motorcycle license ride a motorcycle up there put it in the bed of the truck bring it on home great idea this is the bike i chose so this thing is a 2016 honda xr650l and it's, I mean, just a little enduro. Nothing special. It is all stock. Yeah, stock mufflers, stock everything. Now, it does have a three and a half gallon tank on it, which is cool. And this bike belongs to Junior. He, uh, you know, he don't like to leave anything factory, so he painted the fenders and that and that and that and all that green. 
and naturally it's not staying on there no big deal the box been sitting for quite a few years so we put a new tire new tire and went ahead and put a chain on it we got us a nice brand new chain and then if y'all notice my uh that's a memory foam bath mat and i'll tell you why I drove this thing about an hour and a half yesterday to Lance's place. 14 hours of riding on this bike. Mm, that's going to take me like six days because the seat on this thing is like hard as a rock. And uh, yeah, hour and a half, I, I was ready to walk back home. Uh, this thing does run 70 mile per hour. It's not a problem. But, uh, yeah, it's got 994 miles on it. It had 729 on it when I first started riding a motorcycle. So I have put, what, 270 miles on it? That's the most I've ridden a motorcycle. So we're going to take the back roads. We're going to see some nice scenery. It'll be time lapse for y'all. And yeah, we'll see you in the morning. Okay, uh, we are five hours in, like 200 and 260, 270 miles down, something like that. Everything's going good, bike works great. The butt, not happy. Uh, yeah, other than that though, everything's going great. Hopefully we can uh, get pretty close by midnight, one, three, tomorrow morning, something. I don't know, we'll see. I can ride my bike with no handlebars, no handlebars, no handlebars. I can ride my bike with no handlebars, no handlebars, no handlebars. So I was riding along and going through the backwoods of uh, Mississippi hope y'all can hear me and I ran across this Northeast Mississippi Motorsports it's a drag strip I don't know if it's still in operation but they mow it so maybe Northeast Mississippi Motorsports we'll have to look that up see if it's still in business Good morning. Just wanted to give a little update. Made it into my aunt's place last night. Uh, it was about 10:45. So uh, pretty much 16 hours on this. Yeah. Absolute torture. I uh, do not recommend it if, uh, you know, you're a first-time rider. Unless you just, you know, really want to punish yourself for 16 hours straight. Trip went great. Um, I couldn't make it to uh, Flatboat Garage last night because he was another three hours out. So I decided to stop at my aunt's place, hang out for a little bit, and then uh, start fresh this morning. We're going to get over there 
I've got some work to do on the S10, get it road ready, and then I'm gonna come back to my aunt's place tomorrow, hang out with her for a little bit. Then we gotta have some exhaust work done and that kind of thing on the S10, so. I tell you, if you don't know about Tennessee, you really should. This is what I love about Eastern Tennessee. Now my family's been up here for quite some years and I've spent summers up here when I was young. But look at this. Of course, this big ugly house is in the way, but there's mountains everywhere. The night ride last night was awesome. Windy, curvy roads. We're on some windy and curvy roads today because naturally, if you're not on the interstate, well, even if you're on the interstate over in Eastern Tennessee, you're going through the mountains. So it, uh, it's an awesome view. It's an awesome travel. I'm taking back roads and it, it's just, the sights are unreal. You get down in under the trees and all that in the valleys, it's nice and cool. Naturally, you get up on top of the mountain. It is hot. Feels like I'm home in Texas. But we're gonna get this little trip out of the way so I can get off of this extremely uncomfortable motorcycle and quit torturing myself for today. Anyway, let's get back on the road. made it to Flatbrook Garage. Where's your sign at? I don't have one. You don't have a sign? I don't have a sign. No, no. It's, I'm flat broke, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, there it is, there it is, there oh, it is. Wait, it's wait. right there. So, how's my truck? Still here. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. I guess we need to go find it, because we're, we're, we're done with this <laughs> for a while. Uh, I would imagine, saddle sores. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you ever want to torture yourself, like, bad, Get you a dual sport and drive it. We figured it was like 924 miles. I've, I've only got like 19 hours on that seat. So, mm. yeah, I'm, I'm on vacation from uh, riding motorcycle for a while. Now I gotta say, this is a lot more comfortable than that motorcycle. I think sitting on a rock would be much more comfortable than a motorcycle <laughs> by now. Let's see, no keys. Oh, there they are. In the glove box. I did put them in the glove box. You did. Look at there. You thought ahead. And we'll need to hook the battery up. Yeah. High tech wiring. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, that's. Uh, let, let's not get carried away on moving that stuff. You know, looking at this thing, I was thinking we had some goofy That's a air cleaner, one. but it will take a round one. It will. I have some Fords that might fit it. <laughs> you just lost four subscribers. Hey, it, it might run better. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. Hip battery hooked up. Yeah. yeah. The wiring is that's the key. Let's see. We got any juice? Yeah. Well, we got door buzzer, fuel pump, fuel pump. Prime that dude a little bit. Door buzzer is annoying. We good? Yep. I hear it trying to spray. You know how they make that sputtered yeah. spray sound? Try it again. Got it. 
Nothing. No spray. Can we give it a sniff? See if it'll do anything? Yeah. Uh, so, we have a fuel issue. I wonder if we got, if there's a uh, port on the fuel line. Check our pressure. Oh, yeah, uh, a Schrader valve or something? Yep. Yeah. Going to be down there somewhere. So TBI. It's... We didn't unhook anything off of this, did we? No. You want me to hit the key? See if any juice comes loose. We'll uh, get this open a little bit more first. Well, we're getting fuel. Oh, yeah. Well, then it's your sprayer, your injector. Like yeah. I said, I heard the injector sputter and then it quit. You know, they make the, uh, I don't make a garden hose sound almost. I do have an extra TBI setup, but it has, for a V8, it's got the dual injectors. So I wonder if the single injector would fit. If mm. I pulled one of the Well, dual's. that's the deal. When I tried to rebuild this throttle body the last time, I couldn't ever get the injector out. Oh, I was trying to keep from tearing it up. Oh, uh, so I'm gonna spin it over and see if you can tap on that thing and see. If All right, can... where's our fancy tool set? There you go. Throttle stuck. Well, you got full throttle. It doesn't have a rev limiter, I don't guess. <laughs> <laughs> what is the deal? You know, I think I remember something like that before. Was it just a linkage? I don't know. Oh, there's a catch right there. Yeah, I don't know if that's cable or linkage or what. Well, the throttle body spring. Well, there's. Let's huh? see. Let's see if we can. Who left the key in the ignition? <laughs> Where's the hammer? Hammer. I'm telling you, I'm giving it to you as a parting gift. Clutch? Yeah, yeah. Sweet owner doesn't want to release the uh, request doesn't want to release the uh, crank it out for the kid. Hang it up. Shop. I think it's worse in here. <laughs> you can smell the bad gas. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you can smell the whole truck. <sighs> yeah, yeah. You can't, you can't drink it in. <sighs> you drink it. I'll take something a little fresher. This is yuck. Well, we don't have to worry about popping the bead on this one. No, that, that one's uh. Cool. So I guess we have a dilemma you need to explain. We have wheels and tires for it. Pretty nice ones too. Brand new tires, nice set of wheels. Problem is, 
They don't actually fit that bolt pattern. Ordered a set of spacers. Supposed to be here. Didn't show up. Ordered another set. They're supposed to be here today. These are the wheels. And yeah, you guessed it. No spacers. So now, I guess we got to go to Walmart, see if we can buy some tires because uh, we can't use the brand new stuff that we got. Hmm. Start a YouTube channel, they said. It'll be fun. Work on cars. So much fun. Unfortunately, with our uh, wheel dilemma, looks like uh, Bill's headed off to like 45 miles from here, somewhere in North Carolina to the Walmart, pick us up some tires. And while he's gone, we'll get started on uh, some brake hoses, clutch master and slave cylinder, and whatever other parts that we got. We got some tires to unload. We got some tires to change. Sean has what, the brake lines done? You got the uh, slave cylinder for the clutch? Clutch, master slave, all that. Yeah, that's, all, that's all That's all in, so that's, in. that's uh, bleeding out now? Yeah, working on bleeding it now. Okay, and then... Uh, brake lines are on, but we'll have to go through them. Please. What other important things do we need to do? Uh, we need to fix a motor mount because the motor likes to visit the passenger side quite a bit whenever it's <laughs> under load. Uh, this thing doesn't really have a lot of power, but there are hills in Tennessee that we'll have to climb, so... Motor mount would be a plus. Kind of need the motor to stay in one spot. So we're going to bolt that right there. And then come on the outside of the frame, we're going to pull the gearbox bolt and bolt it right there. Done! Look at we even pulled the engine down. Okay, I probably should have left that on there. <laughs> yeah, axle seal's leaking. No! Like hemorrhaging? Yep. So we are going to need an axle seal. Hardware kits. Uh, I have one. Rusted. I have a hardware kit, I should have. For an S10? Huh? For an S10? I think I do, I have one. So I guess take the other side off, because it looks like we're going to need some uh, brake shoes and hardware kit. Well, there you go. Yeah. Awesome. So, that's not good. Huh? That's not good. So we have wheels on us, so that's no, that's no worries. No, I'm not opposed to running over to Steve's jacking up the old parts truck and robbing some brake shoes off of it. It's up to you. Wanna call Steve? We're not doing axle seals though. <laughs> Clutch is finally bled. It. Works. Yeah. <laughs> show you our test method because I didn't want to have to crank it up you know and stick it in gear and all that my steps on this axle you know because open diff pry bar on this axle won't move push in on the clutch moves clutch is done simple logic <laughs> found out our uh, throttle pedal sticking issue too when you come down here and push this down Look at there. Stupid floor mat. Which is typically always the problem with the sticky throttle. Oh. Yeah. Unless, you know, if it's factory, it's a floor mat. No. 
I agree. Yeah, we're, we're making it way harder than it should be. Oh my lord. You know? I think that's the mechanic way. Over, just overcompensate. Yeah, overthink it and yeah, all yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we're going to bolt some wheels on this thing and back it out and clean it up because, you know, why not? morning we're back at it yeah professional camera guy over here gotta get all this stuff set up <laughs> he uh, got me a charging port put in here somewhere oh there it is so we can charge phone camera camera batteries that's it yeah and I am working on brakes <sighs> naturally you know brakes the uh, line rusted in the nut, so I have to take brake hose back off from up there so that I can unscrew this line and unscrew it off the wheel cylinder on this side. And yeah, fun. So Bill's going to start cleaning up on the interior for me. He's going to, I'm going to say he's going to get the nasty job, and you know, I'll get the nice clean stuff. This thing did actually uh, clean up pretty decent yesterday. I mean, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd give that paint job about a negative 6. Perfect. Yeah. Just got some nice patina going on on the uh, spray paint uh, hood there. You need to save on that patina. Right. You know, you got to kind of reel it in because that text is going to make it worse. So you got to save. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the sun hits that thing. Yeah, it's all over. Yeah. We're going to get busy on these brakes and uh, see if we can't make it out of here sometime today. That's the plan anyway. The Sean Suite is still open though. You know, the <laughs> Sean Suite is always here, so. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm ready to go home. <laughs> Finally got the wheel cylinder and all back in there. Get some brakes on it. Our bar. It goes there. Yeah, it's, it's missing the top half for this spring. And being that that's for the parking brake adjuster lever there, you can see it. We're just not going to use that. So I found one of the old springs put it on there so that we could have our brake shoes secure. <sighs> now we can move to the other side, see what kind of challenges that one gives us. Meanwhile, Bill's been cleaning on the interior. What's that looking like? Yeah, looking less, a lot better. It's less worse. <laughs> it's less worse. Yeah. Do you want to leave the headliner in or just pull it down? No, I'll just leave it there. Ah, uh, it's character. Yeah. So, and we got to leave the My Little Ponies. Absolutely. On, yeah, on that's the, yeah, yeah, that's that's all character there. Yeah. Cool. You can touch the steering wheel without a sticky sound coming off now. We'll clean the windows too. We're giving you the whole the twenty dollar premium. Twenty dollar premium Turtle car Town wash. Car wash. Right. So clean the bed out or working on it. it. Looks a lot better already. And you do have tie downs. Yeah. So it's like tie my motorcycle down. Good deal. One more break, bleed them. Clean just one more cleaning up. You're ready to rock and roll. Well, I hope so. So here's something I try to stress to people. On a uh, older drum brake setup, you have a primary and a secondary shoe. Long one goes in the back. Uh, that's the back of the truck. That's the front. Yeah, I screwed up. You're allowed. That's what you get when working with, uh, you know, subpar YouTubers. There you go, baby. <laughs> oh no, I'm just ready to be done with this truck and screwed up. So, I'm not gonna change it around. It'll make it. Mm. Let's 
trip is going great. Alright, pump it up. Down. Up. Down. Quick trip to O'Reilly's. Got us a brake line and union. Cut the old flare off the old axle. I'll flare or the old axle. You tell I'm tired. The old line. Cut the flare off there. We'll re-flare the factory line farther back. Bolt that into it with the union. Bolt this into the factory union up front, and we're good to go. Brakes, pull, motor mount, tight, air cleaner, check, full oil, uh, full of air, I think that's about it. Guess we uh, run her down the road on a little test drive now. See how it acts. Come back, load the motor bicycle and some wheels, close, hit the road. That sound right? Been a rough one. Okay, let's go test drive it. jump on the highway and head towards my aunt's house. Notice when I was sitting at a stop sign, I felt the brake pedal move. Yeah, looks like the rear line's blowed out in another spot. ease it to my aunt's house and I don't know, see if I can find an O'Reilly's on the way and maybe buy some more brake line. I'll just uh, completely eliminate that whole factory brake line and I'll just ran, run a new metal line all the way back to the, uh, to the rear brake hose though. Awesome.
Mm, good thing it's a standard. I can, uh, you know, use it to desail on the heels. Last night we was able to sneak into my aunt's place over in uh, Cookville, Tennessee. It was about, about a three hour drive. Um, I don't know, I have to look at the map again. I think it was like a hundred and something miles, 130 miles, 140 miles, something like that. So she was, uh, she did good other than the fact that, you know, we didn't have any headlights. so. When we got here last night, it was pretty dark. So, was stressing that one a little bit, but we made it, no problem. Got to hang out with family for a little bit. So today it's gonna be like a nonstop trip from here is like 11 hours. So we're gonna go to the fuel station, gas up, see what kind of mileage we've been getting and throw her on the old interstate, head on back. I did notice yesterday in fifth gear, about 65 mile per hour is all she wants to do. She's, uh, she's pretty tacked out, so I don't think I'm gonna run it real hard today. Probably run between 60 and 65, and uh, yeah, just ease on back. So let's get back on the road. it up was headed to the gas station and something slung off of it noise went away and I think we just slung the belt that ain't good so now in a mad dash to find a parts store
Watered her up. Oh, nice. Tensioner come apart. Yeah, that's uh, not ideal. Okay. So probably turn around, go back to my family's place so that I can, uh, you know, source a tensioner and get it replaced and all that good stuff. Because I don't have any tools. Yeah. Well, we didn't tear the belt up though. The old AC delete looks like uh, it's going to delete on pretty soon too. <sighs> fun, fun. Well, she's quiet. Oh, maybe it's because we're just coasting. Yeah, that's how you get somewhere when you're overheating. Crank it up, take off, and kill it. Coast for a while. You're in the mountains, are working great. You gas it up the hills, you just coast down the hills, and then hope and pray you got enough to make it up the next hill. Okay. Let's go. So here's where we're at. <clears throat> Made it to my cousin's house, which is right down the road from my aunt's house. Cause I figure she'd be, her and her husband more be the one to have tools. Need to get the tension off <clears throat> so that I can get the pulley off cause the bolt's on the back side. This bolt got its brake loose. It's galling up inside the aluminum housing. So, just put a wrench on this bolt to get it broke loose. Yeah, it just wants to round off because it can't get all the way on it. So it looks like I'm pulling the alternator so I can get to these two bolts here and then go down underneath and pull these three bolts down here so I can pull the whole bracket assembly off so I can get that nut off or bolt out. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right, quick trip to uh, O'Reilly's for a pulley and a Harbor Freight for a nice little tool kit. Oh yeah. We can work on some stuff now. Yeah, this is uh, awesome. And it does go all the way through. No worries, pulling the bracket off wasn't that big a deal. So let's get this pulley on here, see if we can get a belt back on it. See if we can try to leave again.
like uh, 124 miles from Memphis. So we ran about 165 miles from my family's place. Went ahead and stopped so I could, uh, you know, top off with fuel, go ahead and give me something to eat. Check the fuel mileage. And I've been averaging 66, I've been running 66, 68 mile per hour. This thing, you know, from third, fourth, and fifth, it doesn't feel like the gears change that much. So it's still fairly low geared. She took 5.9 gallons, which is right at 25 miles to the gallon. Not bad. So we were cruising along and I noticed that the uh, pressure was looking a little low. Last time I checked it, it was about half, three quarters of a quart low. Didn't think no big deal about it. And I guess we've been, uh, I guess about a hundred miles since then. And wasn't quite sounding right. So went ahead and punched in the uh, closest O'Reilly's so that we can go ahead and get us some oil stabilizer and some more oil so we can keep that on full and go ahead and get some headlights, you know, cause we know it's not gonna be until dark whenever I get home. So might as well go ahead and put those in while I let the truck cool down and check all our vitals and then go from there. Really? Professional fastener is it? It is. At least I can now see in the dark somewhat. Fixed. Okay. Oil stabilizer and uh, cord oil. Let's see what she sound like. Another fuel stop. Truck's doing great. Check the oil. We're a quart down. 
and I guess I went probably 160 180 miles this time so went ahead and added a quart to it topped it off everything's doing good uh, check my GPS on my phone and I've actually been running 70 so she's just purring right along burning a little bit of oil but you know that's showing 276,073 miles no telling when that quit so she's probably a little tired but she's doing the deed so we're just going to keep on rolling mm -hmm. Alrighty, about an hour from the house, last fuel stop. Top the oil off, used another quart, no big deal. We're gonna run in here and grab us something to snack on, grab me a drink, make this final little leg to the house. Just when you think you got the trip licked. I'm on the last stretch. I'm probably 20 minutes, 25 minutes from home. And I think it slung the belt. Let's go look. You shut up. I don't want to hear you right now. Yep. Oh, man. Wadded it up in the fan. Okay, so... Hopefully we have enough battery that we can crank this sucker and kill it. Let it cool, coast, all that good stuff. Um, Cause I got too much stuff in here to just go ahead and unload the bike and head home. And my trailer is like another 15 miles from home so let's see how far we can get because I ain't putting a belt on it tonight boy that thing's puking some oil out of it ain't it you see all that down there there's no pressure built up on the radiator to see how far we can get. This is how you get home with no belt.
but we're going to get there. to make it home last night doing that whole you know coasting power up a hill kill it coast down the other side and didn't hardly have to use the starter I did have one four-way stop that I had to come to so I had to use the starter but I was hoping that I would have enough battery to uh, to make it home you know with running the headlights the whole time but anyway made it home no problem Got up this morning, luckily part store's right around the corner from the house, so I drove the truck down here. We found us a belt. It is uh, not the same factory belt that this truck would have came with. It's a lot longer, so I guess that delete pulley's a lot bigger. But we are ready to go to Lance's and drop this green puff off. <clears throat> and a new belt in there. So, jump back on the road and head up to Lance's real quick and show him his uh, ride. So I stopped to get me some breakfast. The truck was running a little bit warm. Just happened to look down. What in the world? I guess the heater core is blowed out. Nice. I noticed uh, water down there in the floorboard. And uh, yeah, I know where it's coming from now. So, going to loop these hoses real quick so we can eliminate that issue and then uh, top it back off with some coolant. Then head the lances. Finally made it to Lance's. Time to turn this little jewel over to him and see what he has in store for it. So I appreciate y'all following along. Hope y'all enjoyed it. See you on the next one. As always, thank you guys so much for watching this video and super shout out for Sean for all the hard work he put into it. We hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Let us know in the comments below if you'd like to see more content like this. Don't forget to like, subscribe, ring that bell, and we'll see you on the next one.